Czech, Cestina Czech pronunciation, Tisina, historically also Bohemian, lingua bohemica in Latin, is a West Slavic language of the Czech Slovak group. Spoken by over 10 million people, it serves as the official language of the Czech Republic. Czech is closely related to Slovak, to the point of mutual intelligibility to a very high degree. Like other Slavic languages, Czech is a fusional language with a rich system of morphology and relatively flexible word order. Its vocabulary has been extensively influenced by Latin and German, the Czech Slovak group developed within West Slavic in the High Medieval period, and the standardization of Czech and Slovak within the Czech Slovak dialect continuum emerged in the early modern period. In the later 18th to mid 19th century, the modern written standard became codified in the context of the Czech National Revival. The main vernacular, known as Common Czech, is based on the vernacular of Prague, but is now spoken throughout most of the Czech Republic. The Moravian dialects spoken in the eastern part of the country are also classified as Czech, although some of their eastern variants are closer to Slovak. Czech has a moderately sized phoneme inventory, comprising 10 monophthongs, 3 diphthongs and 25 consonants divided into hard, neutral, and soft categories. Words may contain complicated consonant clusters or lack vowels altogether. Czech has a raised alveolar trill, which is not known to occur as a phoneme in any other language, represented by the grapheme R. Czech uses a simple orthography which phonologists have used as a model. Classification Czech is a member of the West Slavic sub-branch of the Slavic branch of the Indo-European language family. This branch includes Polish, Kashubian, Upper and Lower Sorbian and Slovak. Slovak is the closest language genetic neighbor of Czech, followed by Polish and Silesian. The West Slavic languages are spoken in Central Europe. Czech is distinguished from other West Slavic languages by a more restricted distinction between hard and soft consonants. See phonology below. Topic: History Medieval, Old Czech The term, Old Czech, is applied to the period predating the 16th century, with the earliest records of the High Medieval period also classified as, Early Old Czech, but the term, Medieval Czech, is also used. Around the 7th century, the Slavic expansion reached Central Europe, settling on the eastern fringes of the Frankish Empire. The West Slavic polity of Great Moravia formed by the 9th century. The Christianization of Bohemia took place during the 9th and 10th centuries. The diversification of the Czech Slovak group within West Slavic began around that time, marked among other things by its ephemeral use of the voiced velar fricative consonant and consistent stress on the first syllable. The Bohemian Czech language is first recorded in writing in glosses and short notes during the 12th to 13th centuries. Literary works written in Czech appear in the late 13th and early 14th century and administrative documents first appear towards the late 14th century. The first complete Bible translation also dates to this period. Old Czech texts, including poetry and cookbooks, were produced outside the university as well. Literary activity becomes widespread in the early 15th century in the context of the Bohemian Reformation. Jan Hus contributed significantly to the standardization of Czech orthography, advocated for widespread literacy among Czech commoners particularly in religion and made early efforts to model written Czech after the spoken language. <laughs> early modern Czech There was no standardization distinguishing between Czech and Slovak prior to the 15th century. In the 16th century, the division between Czech and Slovak becomes apparent, marking the confessional division between Lutheran Protestants in Slovakia using Czech orthography and Catholics, especially Slovak Jesuits, beginning to use a separate Slovak orthography based on the language of the Trnava region. The publication of the Kralis Bible between 1579 and 1593 the first complete Czech translation of the Bible from the original languages became very important for standardization of the Czech language in the following centuries. In 1615, the Bohemian Diet tried to declare Czech to be the only official language of the kingdom. 
After the Bohemian Revolt of predominantly Protestant aristocracy, which was defeated by the Habsburgs in 1620, the Protestant intellectuals had to leave the country. This emigration together with other consequences of the Thirty Years' War had a negative impact on the further use of the Czech language. In 1627, Czech and German became official languages of the Kingdom of Bohemia and in the 18th century German became dominant in Bohemia and Moravia, especially among the upper classes. <laughs> Modern Czech The modern standard Czech language originates in standardization efforts of the 18th century. By then the language had developed a literary tradition, and since then it has changed little. Journals from that period have no substantial differences from modern standard Czech, and contemporary Czechs can understand them with little difficulty. Changes include the morphological shift of I to EJ and A to I, although A survives for some uses, and the merging of I and the former EJ. Sometime before the 18th century, the Czech language abandoned a distinction between phonemic, L, and, which survives in Slovak. With the beginning of the national revival of the mid-18th century, Czech historians began to emphasize their people's accomplishments from the 15th through the 17th centuries, rebelling against the Counter-Reformation the Habsburg re efforts which had denigrated Czech and other non-Latin languages. Czech philologists studied 16th-century texts, advocating the return of the language to high culture. This period is known as the Czech National Revival or Renaissance. During the National Revival, in 1809, linguist and historian Joseph Dobrovsky released a German language grammar of Old Czech entitled Osführliches Lehrgebäu der Bohemischen Sprache, Comprehensive Doctrine of the Bohemian Language. Dabrowski had intended his book to be descriptive, and did not think Czech had a realistic chance of returning as a major language. However, Joseph Jungmann and other revivalists used Dabrowski's book to advocate for a Czech linguistic revival. Changes during this time included spelling reform notably, I in place of the former J and J in place of G, the use of T, rather than T to end infinitive verbs and the non-capitalization of nouns which had been a late borrowing from German. These changes differentiated Czech from Slovak. Modern scholars disagree about whether the conservative revivalists were motivated by nationalism or considered contemporary spoken Czech unsuitable for formal, widespread use. Adherence to historical patterns was later relaxed, and standard Czech adopted a number of features from common Czech, a widespread, informal register, such as leaving some proper nouns undeclined. This has resulted in a relatively high level of homogeneity among all varieties of the language. Topic. Geographic distribution In 2005 and 2007, Czech was spoken by about 10 million residents of the Czech Republic. A Eurobarometer survey conducted from January to March 2012 found that the first language of 98% of Czech citizens was Czech, the third highest in the European Union behind Greece and Hungary. Czech, the official language of the Czech Republic a member of the European Union since 2004, is one of the EU's official languages and the 2012 Eurobarometer survey found that Czech was the foreign language most often used in Slovakia. Economist Jonathan Van Perys collected data on language knowledge in Europe for the 2012 European Day of Languages. The five countries with the greatest use of Czech were the Czech Republic 98.77%, Slovakia 24.86%, Portugal 1.93%, Poland 0.98% and Germany 0.47%. Czech speakers in Slovakia primarily live in cities. Since it is a recognized minority language in Slovakia, Slovak citizens who speak only Czech may communicate with the government in their language to the extent that Slovak speakers in the Czech Republic may do so. <laughs> United States Immigration of Czechs from Europe to the United States occurred primarily from 1848 to 1914. Czech is a less commonly taught language in U.S. schools, and is taught at Czech heritage centers. Large communities of Czech Americans live in the states of Texas, Nebraska and Wisconsin. In the 2000 United States Census, Czech was reported as the most common language spoken at home besides English in Valley, Butler and Saunders counties, Nebraska and Republic County, Kansas. 
with the exception of Spanish the non-English language most commonly spoken at home nationwide, Czech was the most common home language in over a dozen additional counties in Nebraska, Kansas, Texas, North Dakota and Minnesota. As of 2009, 70,500 Americans spoke Czech as their first language 49th place nationwide, behind Turkish and ahead of Swedish. Standard Czech The modern written standard is directly based on the standardization during the Czech National Revival in the 1830s, significantly influenced by Joseph Jungmann's Czech-German Dictionary published during 1834–1839. Jungmann used vocabulary of the Bible of Kralis period and of the language used by his contemporaries. He borrowed words not present in Czech from other Slavic languages or created neologisms. Phonology <laughs> 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 Standard Czech contains ten basic vowel phonemes, and three more found only in loanwords. They are a, o, and u, their long counterparts, a, i, o, and u, and three diphthongs, o, o, and u. The latter two diphthongs and the long, o, are exclusive to loanwords. Vowels are never reduced to schwa sounds when unstressed. Each word usually has primary stress on its first syllable, except for enclitics, minor, monosyllabic, unstressed syllables. In all words of more than two syllables, every odd-numbered syllable receives secondary stress. Stress is unrelated to vowel length, and the possibility of stressed short vowels and unstressed long vowels can be confusing to students whose native language combines the features such as most varieties of English. Voiced consonants with unvoiced counterparts are unvoiced at the end of a word before a pause, and in consonant clusters voicing assimilation occurs, which matches voicing to the following consonant. The unvoiced counterpart of is x check consonants are categorized as hard neutral or soft hard d k n r t x neutral b f l per meter p s v z soft c j r t s this distinction describes the declension patterns of nouns which is based on the category of a noun's ending consonant Hard consonants may not be followed by i or i in writing, or soft ones by y or y except in loanwords such as kilogram. Neutral consonants may take either character. Hard consonants are sometimes known as strong, and soft ones as weak. The phoneme represented by the letter R, capital R is often considered unique to Czech, but in fact it also occurs in Irish Gaelic in front of a slender vowel, as in the word ir, the Irish name of Ireland. It represents the raised alveolar non-sonorant trill IPA, R, a sound somewhere between Czechs R and Z example, Reka, river, and is present in Dvorak. In unvoiced environments, R, is realized as its voiceless allophone R, the consonants, R, and, L, can be syllabic, acting as syllable nuclei in place of a vowel. Stri C P R S T S K R Z K R K, stick your finger through your throat is a well-known Czech tongue twister using only syllabic consonants. Topic. Grammar Slavic grammar is fusional, its nouns, verbs, and adjectives are inflected by phonological processes to modify their meanings and grammatical functions, and the easily separable affixes characteristic of agglutinative languages are limited. Slavic inflection is complex and pervasive, inflecting for case, gender and number in nouns and tense, aspect, mood, person and subject number and gender in verbs. Parts of speech include adjectives, adverbs, numbers, interrogative words, prepositions, conjunctions and interjections. Adverbs are primarily formed from adjectives by taking the final y or i of the base form and replacing it with e, e, or o. Negative statements are formed by adding the affix ne to the verb of a clause, with one exception, je, he, she or it is becomes neni. Topic. Sentence and clause structure Because Czech uses grammatical case to convey word function in a sentence instead of relying on word order, as English does, its word order is flexible. As a pro-drop language, in Czech an intransitive sentence can consist of only a verb, information about its subject is encoded in the verb. Enclitics primarily auxiliary verbs and pronouns must appear in the second syntactic slot of a sentence, after the first stressed unit. 
The first slot must contain a subject and object, a main form of a verb, an adverb or a conjunction except for the like conjunctions a, and, i, and even, or ale, but. Czech syntax has a subject-verb-object sentence structure. In practice, however, word order is flexible and used for topicalization and focus. Although Czech has a periphrastic passive construction like English, colloquial word order changes frequently produce the passive voice. For example, to change Peter killed Paul to Paul was killed by Peter. The order of subject and object is inverted, Peter Zabil Pavla. Peter killed Paul becomes Paul, Peter killed Pavla Zabil Peter. Pavla is in the accusative case, the grammatical object in this case, the victim of the verb, a word at the end of a clause is typically emphasized, unless an upward intonation indicates that the sentence is a question. Pays g bagetu. The dog eats the baguette rather than eating something else. Bagetu g pays. The dog eats the baguette rather than someone else doing so. Pays bagetu g. The dog eats the baguette rather than doing something else to it. G pays bagetu? Does the dog eat the baguette? Emphasis ambiguous in portions of Bohemia including Prague. Questions such as G pays bagetu, without an interrogative word such as ko, what, or kdo, who, are intoned in a slow rise from low to high, quickly dropping to low on the last word or phrase. In modern Czech syntax, adjectives precede nouns, with few exceptions. Relative clauses are introduced by relativizers such as the adjective kateri, analogous to the English relative pronouns, which, that, who, and whom. As with other adjectives, it is declined into the appropriate case see declension below to match its associated noun, person and number. Relative clauses follow the noun they modify, and the following is a glossed example. English, I want to visit the university that John attends. Topic. Declension In Czech, nouns and adjectives are declined into one of seven grammatical cases. Nouns are inflected to indicate their use in a sentence. A nominative-accusative language, Czech marks subject nouns with nominative case and object nouns with accusative case. The genitive case marks possessive nouns and some types of movement. The remaining cases instrumental, locative, vocative and dative indicate semantic relationships, such as secondary objects, movement or position dative case and accompaniment instrumental case. An adjective's case agrees with that of the noun it describes. When Czech children learn their language's declension patterns, the cases are referred to by number. Some Czech grammatical texts order the cases differently, grouping the nominative and accusative and the dative and locative together because those declension patterns are often identical. This order accommodates learners with experience in other inflected languages, such as Latin or Russian. This order is nominative, accusative, genitive, dative, locative, instrumental and vocative. Some prepositions require the nouns they modify to take a particular case. The cases assigned by each preposition are based on the physical or metaphorical direction, or location, conveyed by it. For example, odd from, away from, and z out of, off assign the genitive case. Other prepositions take one of several cases, with their meaning dependent on the case, na means, onto, or, for, with the accusative case, but, on. With the locative, examples of declension patterns using prepositions for a few nouns with adjectives follow. Only one plural example is given, since plural declension patterns are similar across genders. This is a glossed example of a sentence using several cases. English, I carried the box into the house with my friend. Czech distinguishes three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter, and the masculine gender is subdivided into animate and inanimate. With few exceptions, feminine nouns in the nominative case end in a, e, or consonant, neuter nouns in o, e, or i, and masculine nouns in a consonant. Adjectives agree in gender and animacy for masculine nouns in the accusative or genitive singular and the nominative plural with the nouns they modify. The main effect of gender in Czech is the difference in noun and adjective declension, but other effects include past tense verb endings, for example, dalal he did, or made, dalala she did, or made, and dalalo it did, or made. Nouns are also inflected for number, distinguishing between singular and plural. 
Typical of a Slavic language, Czech cardinal numbers 1 through 4 allow the nouns and adjectives they modify to take any case, but numbers over 5 place these nouns and adjectives in the genitive case when the entire expression is in nominative or accusative case. The Czech karuna is an example of this feature, it is shown here as the subject of a hypothetical sentence, and declined as genitive for numbers 5 and up. Numerical words decline for case and, for numbers 1 and 2, for gender. Numbers 1 through 5 are shown below as examples, and have some of the most exceptions among Czech numbers. The number 1 has declension patterns identical to those of the demonstrative pronoun, too. Although Czech's grammatical numbers are singular and plural, several residuals of dual forms remain. Some nouns for paired body parts use a historical dual form to express plural in some cases, ruka hand, rus nominative, noa leg, Nahama instrumental, Naho genitive, locative, Oko I, Ochi, and Ucho ear, Uci. While two of these nouns are neuter in their singular forms, all plural forms are considered feminine, their gender is relevant to their associated adjectives and verbs. These forms are plural semantically, used for any non-singular count, as in mezi satirma osima face to face, lit, among four eyes. The plural number paradigms of these nouns are actually a mixture of historical dual and plural forms. For example, nohi legs, nominative, accusative is a standard plural form of this type of noun. Topic. Verb conjugation Czech verb conjugation is less complex than noun and adjective declension because it codes for fewer categories. Verbs agree with their subjects in person first, second or third and number singular or plural, and are conjugated for tense past, present or future. For example, the conjugated verb malavim we speak is in the present tense and first person plural, it is distinguished from other conjugations of the infinitive m love it by its ending, ime, typical of Slavic languages, Czech marks its verbs for one of two grammatical aspects, perfective and imperfective. Most verbs are part of inflected aspect pairs, for example, kupit perfective and kapovit imperfective. Although the verb's meaning is similar, in perfective verbs the action is completed and in imperfective verbs it is ongoing. This is distinct from past and present tense, and any Czech verb of either aspect can be conjugated into any of its three tenses. Aspect describes the state of the action at the time specified by the tense. The verbs of most aspect pairs differ in one of two ways, by prefix or by suffix. In prefix pairs, the perfective verb has an added prefix, for example, the imperfective sat to write, to be writing, compared with the perfective napsat to write down, to finish writing. The most common prefixes are na, o, po, s, u, vy, z and za. In suffix pairs, a different infinitive ending is added to the perfective stem, for example, the perfective verbs kupit to buy and prodat to sell have the imperfective forms kapovit and prodavit. Imperfective verbs may undergo further morphology to make other imperfective verbs iterative and frequentative forms, denoting repeated or regular action. The verb jeet to go has the iterative form chodit to go repeatedly and the frequentative form chodavat to go regularly. Many verbs have only one aspect, and verbs describing continual states of being bite to be, shti to want, most to be able to, lezit to lie down, to be lying down have no perfective form. Conversely, verbs describing immediate states of change, for example, otahotnet to become pregnant and nadnautse to become enthusiastic, have no imperfective aspect. Although Czech's use of present and future tense is largely similar to that of English, the language uses past tense to represent the English present perfect and past perfect. Ona bezala could mean she ran, she has run, or she had run. In some contexts, Czech's perfective present which differs from the English present perfect implies future action, in others, it connotes habitual action. As a result, the language has a proper future tense to minimize ambiguity. The future tense does not involve conjugating the verb describing an action to be undertaken in the future, instead, the future form of bite as shown in the table at left is placed before the infinitive for example, budu gist, I will eat. This conjugation is not followed by bite itself, so future-oriented expressions involving nouns, adjectives, or prepositions rather than verbs omit bite. I will be happy is translated as budu stasny, not budu bite stasny. The infinitive form ends in t, archaically t. It is the form found in dictionaries and the form that follows auxiliary verbs, for example, muzu te slicet. I can hear you. 
Czech verbs have three grammatical moods, indicative, imperative and conditional. The imperative mood adds specific endings for each of three person or number categories, o, i, e, j for second person singular, te, e, t, e, e, j for second person plural and me, im, e, j, m, e for first person plural. The conditional mood is formed with a particle after the past tense verb. This mood indicates possible events, expressed in English as, I would, or, I wish. Most Czech verbs fall into one of five classes, which determine their conjugation patterns. The future tense of bite would be classified as a class 1 verb because of its endings. Examples of the present tense of each class and some common irregular verbs follow in the tables below. Topic. Orthography Czech has one of the most phonemic orthographies of all European languages. Its 31 graphemes represent 30 sounds in most dialects, I and Y have the same sound, and it contains only one digraph, CH, which follows H in the alphabet. As a result, some of its characters have been used by phonologists to denote corresponding sounds in other languages. The characters Q, W and X appear only in foreign words. The hotchik is used with certain letters to form new characters, S, Z, and C, as well as N, E, R, T, and D, the latter five uncommon outside Czech. The last two letters are sometimes written with a comma above, an abbreviated hotchik, because of their height. The character O exists only in loanwords and onomatopoeia. Unlike most European languages, Czech distinguishes vowel length. Long vowels are indicated by an acute accent or, occasionally with U, A ring. Long U is usually written U at the beginning of a word or morpheme and U elsewhere, except for loanwords scutter or onomatopoeia boo". Long vowels and E are not considered separate letters in the alphabetical order. Czech typographical features not associated with phonetics generally resemble those of most Latin European languages, including English. Proper nouns, honorifics, and the first letters of quotations are capitalized, and punctuation is typical of other Latin European languages. Writing of ordinal numerals is similar to most European languages. The Czech language uses a decimal comma instead of a decimal point. When writing a long number, spaces between every three numbers e.g. between hundreds and thousands may be used for better orientation in handwritten texts, but not in decimal places, like in English. The number 1,234,567.8910 may be written as 1,234,567, 8,910 or 1,234,567, 8,910. Ordinal numbers first use a point as in German 1. In proper noun phrases except personal names, only the first word is capitalized Prosky HRAD, Prague Castle. Topic. Varieties The main vernacular of Bohemia is common Czech, based on the dialect of the Prague region. Other Bohemian dialects have become marginalized, while Moravian dialects remain more widespread, with a political movement for Moravian linguistic revival active since the 1990s. Topic. Common Czech The main Czech vernacular, spoken primarily in and around Prague but also throughout the country, is known as Common Czech This is an academic distinction, most Czechs are unaware of the term or associate it with vernacular or incorrect Czech. Compared to standard Czech, Common Czech is characterized by simpler inflection patterns and differences in sound distribution. Common Czech has become ubiquitous in most parts of the Czech Republic since the later 20th century. It is usually defined as an interdialect used in common speech in Bohemia and western parts of Moravia by about two-thirds of all inhabitants of the Czech Republic. Common Czech is not codified, but some of its elements have become adopted in the written standard. Since the second half of the 20th century, common Czech elements have also been spreading to regions previously unaffected, as a consequence of media influence. Standard Czech is still the norm for politicians, businesspeople and other Czechs in formal situations, but common Czech is gaining ground in journalism and the mass media. Common Czech is characterized by quite regular differences from the standard morphology and phonology. These variations are more or less common among all common Czech speakers. 
A usually replaced by Y, I, Mele Mesto, small town, Plamenic, little flame, Latat to fly. Y, sometimes also I, replaced by E J, Malej Dum, small house, M L E J N, mill, Plejvit to waste, B E J T to be, as a consequence of the loss of the difference in the pronunciation of Y, Y and I, I in the 15th century. Unified plural endings of adjectives: Meili Lidi, small people; Meili Zini, small women; Meili Mesta, small towns; Stand, Mali Lide, Malay Zini, Mala Mesta. Unified instrumental ending ma in plural: Estima Dobrejma Lidma, Zanama, Klapama, Mastama, with the good people, women, guys, towns; Stand, S Temi Dobrami Lidmi, Zanami, Klapi, Mesti. In essence, this form resembles the form of the dual, which was once a productive form, but now is almost extinct and retained in a lexically specific set of words. In common Czech the ending became productive again around the 17th century, but used as a substitute for a regular plural form. Prothetic V added to most words beginning O, votevrit vono to open the window stand, otevrit okno, but ovoce not asterisk vovoce fruit. Omitting of the syllabic l in the masculine ending of past tense verbs, rec he said, mo he could, pick he pricked, stand, recle, mole, pickle. Example of declension with the comparison with the standard check. Milady Klovic, young man, person, lada lida young people, milady stat, young state, lada zina, young woman, milade zavire, young animal. Topic. Bohemian dialects. Apart from the common Czech vernacular, there remain a variety of other Bohemian dialects, mostly in marginal rural areas. Dialect use began to weaken in the second half of the 20th century, and by the early 1990s regional dialect use was stigmatized, associated with the shrinking lower class and used in literature or other media for comedic effect. Increased travel and media availability to dialect-speaking populations has encouraged them to shift to or add to their own dialect standard Czech. The Czech Statistical Office in 2003 recognized the following Bohemian dialects: Nurasi Stredočeska, Central Bohemian dialects; Nurasi Jihuzapadočeska, Southwestern Bohemian dialects; Podskupina Chodska, Chod subgroup; Podskupina Daudelbska, Daudelby subgroup; Nurasi Severovichadočeska, Northeastern Bohemian dialects; Podskupina Podkrnoska, Kronos subgroup. Bohemian dialects use a slightly different set of vowel phonemes to standard Czech. The phoneme is peripheral and is replaced by i, and a second native diphthong e occurs, usually in places where standard Czech has i. Topic: <laughs> Moravian dialects. The Czech dialects spoken in Moravia and Silesia are known as Moravian Moravstina. In the Austro-Hungarian Empire, Bohemian Moravian Slovak was a language citizens could register as speaking with German, Polish and several others. Of the Czech dialects, only Moravian is distinguished in nationwide surveys by the Czech Statistical Office. As of 2011, 62,908 Czech citizens spoke Moravian as their first language and 45,561 were diglossal speaking Moravian and Standard Czech as first languages. Beginning in the 16th century, some varieties of Czech resembled Slovak. The southeastern Moravian dialects, in particular, are sometimes considered dialects of Slovak rather than Czech. These dialects form a continuum between the Czech and Slovak languages, using the same declension patterns for nouns and pronouns and the same verb conjugations as Slovak. The Czech Statistical Office in 2003 recognized the following Moravian dialects: Nurasi Seskomoravska, Bohemian Moravian dialects; Nurasi Stredomoravska, Central Moravian dialects; Podskupina Tisnovska, Tisnov subgroup; Nurasi Vychodomoravska, Eastern Moravian dialects; Podskupina Slovaka, Moravian Slovak subgroup; Podskupina Valaska, Moravian Wallachian subgroup; Nurasi Sleska, Silesian dialects. Topic. Sample. In a 1964 textbook on Czech dialectology, Bretislav Kodela used the following sentence to highlight phonetic differences between dialects. Topic: Mutual intelligibility. 
Czech and Slovak have been considered mutually intelligible. Speakers of either language can communicate with greater ease than those of any other pair of West Slavic languages. Since the 1993 dissolution of Czechoslovakia, mutual intelligibility has declined for younger speakers, probably because Czech speakers now experience less exposure to Slovak and vice versa. In phonetic differences, Czech is characterized by a glottal stop before initial vowels and Slovak by its less frequent use of long vowels than Czech. However, Slovak has long forms of the consonants R and L when they function as vowels. Phonemic differences between the two languages are generally consistent, typical of two dialects of a language. Grammatically, although Czech unlike Slovak has a fully productive vocative case, both languages share a common syntax. One study showed that Czech and Slovak lexicons differed by 80%, but this high percentage was found to stem primarily from differing orthographies and slight inconsistencies in morphological formation. Slovak morphology is more regular when changing from the nominative to the locative case. Praha becomes praise in Czech and prahi in Slovak. The two lexicons are generally considered similar, with most differences found in colloquial vocabulary and some scientific terminology. Slovak has slightly more borrowed words than Czech. The similarities between Czech and Slovak led to the languages being considered a single language by a group of 19th century scholars who called themselves Czechoslavs. Czechoslovane, believing that the peoples were connected in a way which excluded German Bohemians and to a lesser extent Hungarians and other Slavs. During the first Czechoslovak Republic 1918 to 1938, although Czechoslovak was designated as the Republic's official language, both Czech and Slovak written standards were used. Standard written Slovak was partially modeled on literary Czech, and Czech was preferred for some official functions in the Slovak half of the Republic. Czech influence on Slovak was protested by Slovak scholars, and when Slovakia broke off from Czechoslovakia in 1938 as the Slovak state which then aligned with Nazi Germany in World War II, literary Slovak was deliberately distanced from Czech. When the Axis powers lost the war and Czechoslovakia reformed, Slovak developed somewhat on its own with Czech influence. During the Prague Spring of 1968, Slovak gained independence from and equality with Czech due to the transformation of Czechoslovakia from a unitary state to a federation. Since the dissolution of Czechoslovakia in 1993, Czechoslovak has referred to improvised pigeons of the languages which have arisen from the decrease in mutual intelligibility. Topic. Vocabulary Czech vocabulary derives primarily from Slavic, Baltic and other Indo-European roots. Although most verbs have Balto-Slavic origins, pronouns, prepositions and some verbs have wider, Indo-European roots. Some loanwords have been restructured by folk etymology to resemble native Czech words herbatov, graveyard, and listina, list. Most Czech loanwords originated in one of two time periods. Earlier loanwords, primarily from German, Greek and Latin, arrived before the Czech National Revival. More recent loanwords derive primarily from English and French, and also from Hebrew, Arabic and Persian. Many Russian loanwords, principally animal names and naval terms, also exist in Czech, although older German loanwords were colloquial. Recent borrowings from other languages are associated with high culture. During the 19th century, words with Greek and Latin roots were rejected in favor of those based on older Czech words and common Slavic roots. Music is muzyka in Polish and muzyka, muzyka in Russian, but in Czech it is hudba. Some Czech words have been borrowed as loanwords into English and other languages. For example, robot from robota, labor, and polka from polka, Polish woman, or from polka, half. Topic. Sample text According to Article 1 of the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights Czech, Vysiční lidé se rodí svobodní a sobí rovní ko do dostojnostia prav. JSOU nadani rozumen a svedomima maji spolu jednat v duchu bratrstvi, English, all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Topic see also Czech centers Czech name Czech sign language Swadesh list of Slavic words Topic Notes Topic References Agnew, Hugh Lacane Origins of the Czech National Renaissance. 
University of Pittsburgh Press. ISBN 978-0-8229-8549-5. Dankovakova, Jana Czech. Handbook of the International Phonetic Association 9th ed. International Phonetic Association, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-0-521-63751-0. Cherna, Eva, McCulloch, Jelana Beginner's Check. Hippocrene Books. ISBN 978-0-7818-1156-9. Klupik, Jan, Nekvapel, Yiri Studies in Functional Stylistics. John Benjamin's Publishing Company. ISBN 978-90-272-1545-1. Eckert, Eva Varieties of Czech, Studies in Czech Sociolinguistics. Editions Rodopi. ISBN 978-90-5183-490-1. Esposito, Anna Analysis of Verbal and Nonverbal Communication and Enactment, The Processing Issues. Springer Press. ISBN 978-3-642-25774-2. Hajikova, Eva Prague Studies in Mathematical Linguistics 9th ed. John Benjamin's Publishing. ISBN 978-90-272-1527-7. Harkins, William Edward A Modern Czech Grammar. King's Crown Press Columbia University. ISBN 978-0-231-09937-0. Kamarik, Miroslav De Gini Seskaho Jazika. Brno, Host. ISBN 978-80-7294-591-7. Kortman, Berndt, Van der Auwera, Johan The Languages and Linguistics of Europe, A Comprehensive Guide World of Linguistics. Mouton de Gruyter. ISBN 978-3-11-022025-4. Kodela, Bretislav, et al., 1964. Vyvoj seskaho jazyka a dialectology in Czech. Seskoslovenske statny pedagogike nakladatelstvi, CS1 maint, explicit use of et al., link Liberman, Anatoly, Trubetskoy, Nikolai S. 2001. N. S. Trubetskoy, Studies in General Linguistics and Language Structure. Duke University Press. ISBN 978-0-8223-2299-3. Mann, Stuart Edward Czech Historical Grammar. Helmut Busk Verlag. ISBN 978-3-87118-261-7. Mathesius, Willem A Functional Analysis of Present-Day English on a General Linguistic Basis. De Gruyter. ISBN 978-90-279-3077-4. Maxwell, Alexander Choosing Slovakia, Slavic Hungary, the Czechoslovak language and accidental nationalism. Tories Academic Studies. ISBN 978-1-84885-074-3. Naughton, James Czech, An Essential Grammar. Routledge Press. ISBN 978-0-415-28785-2. Pansofia Pravidla Seskaho Pravopisu in Czech. Ustav Pro Jazik Seski A V Senior. ISBN 978-80-901373-6-3. Piotrowski, Michael Natural Language Processing for Historical Texts. Morgan and Claypool Publishers. ISBN 978-1-60845-946-9. Qualls, Eduard J. 2012. The Qualls Concise English Grammar. Danon Press. ISBN 978-1-890000-09-7. Rothstein, Bjorn, Theoroff, Rolf. 2010. Mood in the Languages of Europe. John Benjamin's Publishing Company. ISBN 978-90-272-0587-2. Short, David Czech and Slovak. In Bernard Comrie. The World's Major Languages 2nd ed. Routledge. pp. 305-330. Scheer, Tobias A Lateral Theory of Phonology, What is CVCV, and Why Should It Be? Part 1. Walter de Gruyter. ISBN 978-3-11-017871-5.
Stankovic, Edward The Slavic Languages, Unity in Diversity. Mouton de Gruyter. ISBN 978-3-11-009904-1. Sussex, Roland, Kuberly, Paul The Slavic Languages. Cambridge Language Surveys. ISBN 978-0-521-29448-5. Tahal, Carol A Grammar of Czech as a Foreign Language PDF. Factum. Wilson, James Moravians in Prague, a sociolinguistic study of dialect contact in the Czech. Peter Lang International Academic Publishers. ISBN 978-3-631-58694-5. External links Ustav Pro Jazyk Seski Czech Language Institute, the regulatory body for the Czech language in Czech. Czech National Corpus Czech Monolingual Online Dictionary Czech Translation Dictionaries Lexilogos Czech Swadesh List of Basic Vocabulary Words from Wiktionaries Swadesh List Appendix Basic Czech Phrasebook with Audio Pimsleur Czech Comprehensive Course